In the decade leading up to Stephen Platt coming onto the comic book scene, entertainment was being birthed out of competition. There were these great rivalries between Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger, between Metallica and Megadeth, between Nintendo and Sega, and even in the sort of the real world, there was the USA versus the Soviet Union during the Cold War. But in the comic book world, we saw rivalries between Tom McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, and out of all that is birthed Stephen Platt. The best entertainment that I've ever seen, comic books, films, games, uh, cartoons, whatever it might be, has always come out of competition. So make sure when you're coming to draw like Stephen Platt, you're bringing your A game and a healthy competitive spirit. This is gonna be part one of potentially five videos I'm gonna do on this, maybe a few more, because there's so much to look at when it comes to Stephen Platt as an artist. In this first part, we're gonna be looking at some fundamental keys of what makes up his style, and then we'll go into more details on more of the elements of that style um, through the next videos that we look at. Okay, so one of the major things that Stephen Platt was known for is the way he renders things. Okay, see this rendering here? I'll switch over to red for you. This rendering in here, okay, where he has a dark shadow, and then you'll see very thin lines. And something that I heard recently on a Rob Liefeld podcast was that Stephen actually used um, markers. So he'd use uh, fine line pens, things like that, to ink his work uh, when he inked his own work, as opposed to using like a traditional crow quill, uh, dipping into ink pots and things like that, which most traditional inkers use. So he had very thin lines, as you can see over here, very thin lines there. Um, whereas a lot of other artist lines would be more tapered. They'd sort of look more like that, right? They kind of go from a thick to a thin. Stephen's line was just more like that, 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 and then he'd cross over some things like that in that sort of a way. And so he was known for this rendering style, what I'll call underlighting, which is this lined section under here, lighting, and then a midsection in between. Now, on the side, this will look like this. If I was to draw the shape, which is part of the deltoid shoulder muscle, he would draw this sort of section in here. And sometimes I actually think he may have done it like this, line build up not necessarily a huge chunk of black, but maybe line build up first and then be curved because it's a curved muscle. And then if I just raise this so I can see what I'm doing. What he'd do is he'd do a line there, a line there like that. And then he'd do a slight, very thin cross hatch. So you might see some people cross hatching like this. Right? That's not how Stephen cross hatched. Um, Dale Keown too, who did Pit, he was a very, very narrow cross hatcher. So if they did cross hatching like this, sorry, the lag on the pen, right? Their cross hatching would be like that. This is very tight cross hatching. And so Stevens, particularly here, would be like this. One line, two, three, like that. And then it would be very tight. Sorry about that, very tight. Very tight like that. And that's how he did his edges. Okay, so if we're looking here again, you can see underneath, he has just a few lines before it hits another black section of the other part of the deltoid muscle. So if we were to just if I just did that with this, did this, did this, 
there, that, so you can see kind of what's going on. And then kind of build this up a little bit. Oh, the pen's playing up today, unfortunately. Let's see if we can get that out of us. Yep, that's better. So if we sort of get rid of that, like that. Let me just fill this in here. You can see that starts to look a little bit more like that. And then he'll do a few lines like that. And then another line like that. And then over here, you'll have a few lines going like that, with their little piece like that. And so what we're seeing there is this here, this section in here, which I'll use in red, this is the light source. Here we have a top light source. Okay, here it is here. It's like this, and then it's going like that. The light is flashing down like that. Okay. That creates this white section here. And as that light dissipates down to the black, we have these lines that create a gradation. So it's a gradual going from white into the black. And then underneath, which is the real thing Stephen brought to the table, was this underlighting. Now, he wasn't the first guy to do it. There were other artists before him that do it. In his day, whilst Patachio was famous for doing it. Um, but Stephen is the person we all think of from the 90s when we think about this, this style. So what this means is there's some kind of underlighting happening here. Right? Like that. So you've got a little bit of a light there. This is like, let's just say this is like a 10% light. And up here, you've got like an 80% light. And so most of the lighting is coming from the top, a little bit underneath. And that's how he created this sort of look. If you take Stephen Platt's pecs, for example, not his personal pecs, the pecs on the drawing, or down here, it's like complete lighting and then complete black. All right, complete lighting, complete shadow. So there's not a lot of room in Stephen's earlier work. His later work, he did a bit more line work, but his earlier work, Moon Knight into Prophet 4, 5, or the cover for 4, 5, potentially. His style was uh, that he used to do very hard, full-on lighting sources and then straight into the, the darker shadows and just little stippling work like if I zoom in on that there, you can see little stippling work there just to show a little bit of a shift between the dark and the lightness, All right? So if we are to draw, let's just say some abs, All right? Like that. Then the strong shadow is all under here and the lighting source. So it's lighting source here, lighting source there, lighting source there, lighting source there. Okay. So what that means is we draw strong sort of black section. Right? And sometimes it doesn't even have under shadow or under lighting. Some of this, it's not always that way. You know where the light source is but let's just say he does. Under there, he does this little build up on the side here, like that, and sometimes it's just lines. Sometimes he doesn't even do the cross hatch. Sometimes it's just lines. Right? And then these rib sort of striations off to the side, that he does, he'll tend to do this, and I'll zoom in on this for you. So 
Sorry, my dog is making some noise in the background. Don't know if you heard that or not. And you'll see here, he makes these little striations. So, we've got this here, like that. And then you might have another one here where he just suggests. And you might have the other end of it here where he suggests that too. And that would be coming up to the pec muscle there. And you have more dark here, more dark there. Like that. And if we did these muscles under here, we would have the same issue here. This darkness here. And then you have some underlighting. And then you may even have some shadow from the, the ab above in there. Of course, you would then have more arms down there. But he has a massive shadow on this picture because of the head is overhanging. So we might do a big shadow like that. All right, and then do some lines going up. Similar thing. You can also see when he gets into shadow, he has a top shadow. He just does the, these little lines here, which is a cool look he does in a lot of his work. So, so it'd be kind of over here in this section. If you got to this sort of lat section here under the arm, he just has these little uh, oval type shapes. Just does a little bit of line work in there, but everything else is actually black. All right. And so he's done that to the side. And what he's actually doing there is imagine you had a muscle like that, and a muscle like that, and a muscle like that. But the shadow is so heavy, you're only seeing that bit and that bit and you're only seeing that bit right of the whole thing this is all black okay and, and then he's got under lighting with a few rendering lines there to show that and that's what he's doing in there and i'll go into more detail on another piece with that but you can see here see how we're building this this is where the, the black point is, this is the furthest point from light. So if light is here, right there, this point in the middle is the furthest point from that light and the furthest point from an under light coming in here, right? So this point here is the darkest point and then little gra gradually, it gra oh, sort of gradiates, I guess, or gradation out of here, which means if you have the darkest point here, gradually these lines get further and further apart as they come up. See that? Gradually they start close together and they get further apart down there. Because the further they get apart, the more light they're coming into contact with. Here's the light. Here's the light. You understand that? So pretty much most of Stephen Platt's work looks the way it does because he has these two light sources, sometimes even others, uh, working together to create a very, very solid central black part. And then you've got lighting and lighting, and that's how he creates it. You also notice up here, he uses the stippling as well. So if we try and figure out lighting, he'll do this. If there is an entire shoulder and he has a muscle sort of in there and another muscle there and another muscle there and you've got this other muscle coming over here which leads out to your traps and everything else. This is looking down on it by the way. So your, uh, your tricep would be up there, your bicep would be 
down here. If he's done this full dark sort of drawing stuff here, right, and he's done a little bit of the old just gradient there, keeping the light source. He's done more of the under lighting sort of gradient there. The light gets stronger. Okay, so the light is strongest up here and gets weaker as it gets around the muscle. Because remember, the muscle's like that. So the light source is here. This is looking from a side view. The light has to travel down around there. If that's the muscle from a side view. So the light's really bright up here and it gets to this dark point in the middle where the light really doesn't get to. And then you've got under lighting compensating coming up from the bottom, which lights up this area. Okay, if we look inside, from the top, what I'm talking about is this light has to go all the way around like that. And so this dark point here, the light doesn't get to it. The only reason there's light under here is because there's a light down here and that comes all the way back up. Do you understand that? I'm going to say yes. So in this little bit here, he'll just create a little shadow point and then just do a few little lines like that. He'll create another little shadow point like that and then he'll create some more stipples and then obviously he'll have veins going everywhere all this sort of stuff too, right? Now the reason I say that is because some artists in the 90s who were trying to copy Stephen Platt, if I can find a space on this area, I might need to start a new layer here. Let's have a look over here. Turn that off. Some artists would just do this. If you had a deltoid like that, or the deltoids, I should say, like that. All right, there's your tricep, there's your bicep, your sort of outer bicep there, going down into your forearm muscle, etc. There's your elbow, something along those lines. They would just do this. They would get black, like that. They would do under, they would do over, they would do black like this, they would do that, they would do that, they would do that, right? And to some extent you get kind of a Stephen Platt look, but it hasn't got the sophistication of Stephen Platt. It's almost just like a computer applying um, some kind of algorithm, a Stephen Platt algorithm to try and get to draw like him. Okay, so we don't want to do that. So we'll try and get rid of this. Right. Now, whereas the sophisticatedness of Stephen Platt would be that he would draw like that, he would draw like that, he would draw like that. then it might just be this. So although Stephen Platt is known for drawing over the top, really 90s sort of style stuff, and he, he, he did actually change his style as he went along. By the time he got to a book called Soul Saga, which he created himself with uh, uh, Christian Leichner, I think was the colorist on, I think he was a co-creator, and there's another guy who was on there. I can't remember exactly the name of. But once he got to that, his style had become a lot more fine art and he'd done a lot more rendering. And we'll have a look at some of that work in one of the episodes where as his style changes. But right now, we're focusing more on the building blocks of how he looked when he did Moon Knight and the first issue of Prophet, which are sort of classic works of his. He might do that and then he'll do an undershadow like that. And that's a bit messy, I apologize. And then this would disappear 
obviously be veins there. But there might be a bit of that. Might be a bit of subtle line work like that. There might be something subtle up here. And then, of course, depends on which way he renders this. He may render it like that, creating this sort of vertical look. In which case, he'd do something like that. And he might do the same over here, more of a vertical lighting sort of situation, which means the light is coming from over here. He might do that. He might just do that. And then. Um, otherwise, he would do it more traditionally. He might do that vertical lighting on this side. But he might actually do more traditional top lighting like this, depending on what kind of light sources he set up. Um, sometimes he'd do things like that. Other times he would also just be traditional. I call it traditional. It's probably not traditional, but that's just what I call it. Because most artists tend to go for top lighting. And he'd do something like this. And just have the bicep like that. So what we have here is the typical Stephen Platt looking rendering. Uh, it's a quick rendering, obviously, if you were doing this in your own artwork, you'd take a lot more time to do it. But if we go up here, what we're looking at doing here now is he just does these little lines, little stippling marks. He'll rub out some more of this stuff. So, so there's just suggestion as opposed to And Rob Liefeld does this too. Tom McFarlane does this too. They leave gaps in their lines to suggest line as opposed to just doing it. Now, on the forearm down here, usually he would do some kind of line across like that. It might be all the way across. It might be tailored to each muscle, but it would be like that. And then he'll have sort of that coming up. And obviously, that typical pattern going down below like that. And just to finish off for this episode, we'll put through some veins. Down, down, down. So, you have a big bicep vein like that. You have some smaller veins coming off the sides. You'll have some other veins like that. You'll have a number of veins coming through like that. And then we will zoom in and put in some shadow work, some triangles like I spoke about earlier, there, there, And you can see there, that's a very basic beginning of how we get a look like Stephen Platt. All right, guys, that's all for this video. Don't forget, please subscribe uh, so we can keep growing this channel. And I'll catch you next week for the next episode.